Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. Have you ever wondered why Jesus, the Messiah, chose to descend from the tribe of Judah instead of any other son of Jacob? Why was this specific tribe chosen as the vehicle of the Messianic promise? As we examine the sacred genealogies within the pages of the Bible, we realize that the trajectory of Jesus is delineated from Abraham to David, with Judah playing a crucial role in this lineage. Today, I would like to share how this choice is not merely a matter of lineage, but rather a significant detail of the divine plan. The genealogy of Jesus, traced from Abraham to David, plays a fundamental role in understanding his descent from the tribe of Judah. Abraham, considered the father of faith, was blessed by God with the promise of being the patriarch of a great nation. Abraham had two notable sons, Ishmael, son of Hagar, and Isaac, son of Sarah. The divine promise was specifically directed towards the descendants of Isaac. Isaac, in turn, had two sons, Esau and Jacob. The birthright blessing, which would typically guarantee a privileged position, was passed from Esau to Jacob in an episode known as the selling of the birthright. Jacob, later called Israel, became the ancestor of the twelve tribes of Israel. Among Jacob's sons, Judah occupies a central role in Jesus' genealogy. The messianic prophecy recorded in the pages of the Old Testament details the prophetic trajectory that begins to unfold with the patriarch Jacob. When he blesses his sons before his death, it would be expected that among Jacob's sons, Reuben, Simeon, or Levi would assume leadership of the tribe and carry the messianic lineage. However, significant moral failures disqualified each of them as firstborn. Although Reuben had the birthright and would naturally lead, the book of Genesis reveals that while Jacob resided in that land, Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, thus defiling his father's bed with sexual immorality, Genesis chapter 35, verse 22. This act likely disqualified Reuben from leadership. Similarly, when Dinah, the sister of the three, was sexually violated, Simeon and Levi reacted with anger, deceiving all the men of the city and killing them in vengeance for their sister's violation. This violent response incurred a severe rebuke from Jacob. The unbridled fury and the act of deadly vengeance certainly rendered them unfit for the messianic lineage. These disqualifications of the three older brothers stand out, marking a significant contrast to the initial expectation of leadership and continuity of the messianic lineage through them. In this scenario, among Jacob's sons, Judah, despite also committing various mistakes, was chosen to occupy a central role in Jesus' genealogy. The messianic prophecy recorded in the pages of the Old Testament details the prophetic trajectory beginning to unfold with the patriarch Jacob when he blesses his sons before his death. In Genesis, chapter 49, verse 10, Jacob prophesies about Judah, declaring that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. This specific prophecy highlights the royal and ruling lineage that would emerge from the tribe of Judah. The term, Shiloh, is often interpreted as a reference to the Messiah, indicating a forthcoming leader and ruler. The connection between the prophecy and the choice of Judah as the lineage from which Jesus would come is evident in Christ's own ancestry. During Jacob's blessing to his son Judah, a passage recorded in Genesis, chapter 49, verse 9, stands out. Jacob says, Judah is a lion's whelp, from the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down, he lies down as a lion, and as a lion, who shall rouse him? The symbolism of the lion associated with the tribe of Judah is a rich and significant metaphor that permeates the scriptures highlighting both strength and royalty. The lion is a symbol of power, courage, and leadership, and the tribe of Judah was destined to take on a leadership role among the tribes of Israel. This metaphor gains even more significance when we observe how the title, Lion of the Tribe of Judah, is later applied to Jesus Christ in the Messianic context of the Gospels. In Revelation, chapter 5, verse 5, John has a vision in which a lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is victorious, 
a clear reference to Jesus. This symbolic representation evidences Christ's royalty and his ability to overcome all challenges. Throughout biblical history, the lion is not only associated with physical strength but also with the ability to rule with justice and wisdom. The specific choice of Judah as the precursor to the advent of the Messiah highlights God's faithfulness in fulfilling his promises of redemption through the royal lineage of this tribe. When we examine this choice in light of theology, we perceive a unique convergence of divine characteristics and purposes. When Jacob prophesied about Judah in Genesis, he not only emphasized the leadership and scepter that would remain in his lineage but also mentioned that peoples would obey him. This suggests a distinct authority and messianic role attributed to the tribe of Judah. The theology behind this choice can be understood by considering Judah's loyalty and its importance in fulfilling divine promises. David, a notable descendant of Judah, was a revered king, and God made an eternal covenant with him, promising that his throne would be established forever. This covenant points to a messianic king who would arise from David's lineage. Moreover, the very meaning of the name Judah, which denotes praise or worship of God, suggests a special connection to the acknowledgement of divine sovereignty. Throughout its history, the tribe of Judah demonstrated fidelity in devotion to God, making it a significant choice for the coming of the Messiah. When we compare Judah with the other tribes of Jacob, there is evident a clear distinction and a specific purpose in the theological choice that designated it as the Messianic lineage. Each of the twelve tribes has its unique characteristics and contributions to the history of the people of Israel. However, the selection of Judah for the Messianic role reveals deep and significant theological reasons. Other tribes, such as Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and others, played important roles in different contexts. For example, Levi was chosen for the priesthood, and the tribe of Joseph, represented by Ephraim and Manasseh, also received distinct blessings. Each tribe contributed in a special way to the formation and identity of the people of Israel. Nevertheless, the theological reasons that led to the choice of Judah go beyond its individual characteristics. The patriarch Jacob, when pronouncing his final blessings upon his sons, highlighted specific aspects of Judah that would make him suitable for a unique role in the history of redemption. In Genesis 49, Jacob prophesied about Judah, describing him as a lion, indicating strength, leadership, and royalty. These characteristics were essential for the messianic mission that would unfold through his lineage. As we meticulously examine the biblical narratives, we perceive small details and decisions that demonstrate how everything was already meticulously planned within divine designs, in preparation for the lineage that would culminate in Jesus. The story of Joseph is a compelling narrative that vividly illustrates divine providence in choosing the tribe of Judah to play a fundamental role in the messianic lineage. Joseph's saga begins with his father Jacob's preference for him, manifested by the gift of a colorful coat. This gesture sparks jealousy among Joseph's brothers, leading them to conspire against him and even consider his murder. However, Judah's decision to propose selling Joseph instead of killing him marks a crucial point in the biblical narrative, with profound implications for Judah's posterity and the fulfillment of the divine plan. In Genesis 37, verses 26-27, we read, Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. This decision not only immediately preserves Joseph's life but also has broader and unexpected implications. By being sold into slavery, Joseph is taken to Egypt, where, by divine providence, he rises to an influential position and plays a crucial role in preserving life during the impending famine. This twist in the story not only saves Joseph but also establishes the conditions for the future encounter with his brothers. Moreover, Judah's decision not to kill Joseph has significant theological implications. By opting for sale instead of murder, God uses this event to shape the course of history. Judah, unknowingly, 
becomes an integral part of the divine plan by preserving Jacob's lineage. The eventual reunion of Joseph and his brothers not only symbolizes reconciliation and forgiveness but also solidifies Judah's essential role in the messianic lineage. Judah's descendants become a central piece in the revelation of the Messiah. In a prophetic manner, Judah's decision becomes vital for the fulfillment of Jacob's words about the scepter that would remain in Judah until the coming of Shiloh. Another noteworthy divine event is the narrative of Tamar, as recorded in Genesis 38. Tamar was Judah's daughter-in-law, having married two of his sons, Er and Onan, both of whom died prematurely. According to the Levirate tradition, which prescribed that a brother should marry the widow of the deceased brother to ensure offspring, Tamar was destined to marry Judah's third son, Shelah, when he reached the appropriate age. However, Judah hesitated to fulfill this tradition, likely fearing for Shelah's life, given the circumstances of his other son's deaths. Realizing that her future was at stake, Tamar acted cunningly upon noticing Judah's reluctance to honor his promise to give Shelah as a husband. She disguised herself as a prostitute and approached Judah, who, not recognizing her, engaged with her. Since Judah had no coins at that moment, Tamar requested something as collateral until payment was made. He then gave her his seals, cord, and staff. Later, when it became evident that Tamar was pregnant, she confronted Judah with the news. Initially furious and believing that Tamar had engaged in illicit activities, Judah demanded an explanation. It was then that Tamar revealed her strategy and presented the objects he had given as collateral. Recognizing his own fault, Judah admitted the justice of Tamar's actions, stating that she was more righteous than he. Tamar gave birth to twins, Perez and Zira with Perez being a significant ancestor in the lineage that would lead to the messianic descent. This narrative, marked by Tamar's cunning and divine intervention in preserving Judah's lineage, illustrates how God uses even complex situations and dubious human choices to achieve his purposes. Divine providence manifested to ensure that the messianic lineage continued through Judah, even against his will, paving the way for the Savior's coming. We must also remember the story of Ruth, a touching narrative unfolding in the context of Bethlehem during a period of famine in Israel. Ruth, a Moabite, and her mother-in-law, Naomi, returned to Bethlehem after the deaths of their husbands. Demonstrating extraordinary commitment, Ruth decides to stay with Naomi and adopt her faith. She chooses to work in the fields during the harvest, catching the attention of Boaz, a close relative of Naomi and crucially of the lineage of Judah. Boaz, a just and generous man, shows compassion for Ruth and instructs his servants to treat her well, allowing her to glean more abundantly. The turning point occurs when Naomi advises Ruth to act according to the laws of redemption and Levirate marriage from the Old Testament, which allowed a close relative to redeem the property and marry the widow of a deceased relative to preserve the inheritance. Thus, Boaz, following the established laws, assumes the role of Redeemer. The subsequent union of Boaz and Ruth reflects divine providence. This specific choice in Judah's lineage proves significant in light of messianic prophecies and the theological importance of this tribe. After the deaths of their husbands, Ruth could very well have gone her own way and not accompanied her mother-in-law Naomi. However, God's plans were already set. Ruth's story vividly demonstrates how God guided seemingly ordinary events to fulfill His greater purposes, paving the way for the Messiah's coming. The relationship of Boaz and Ruth not only blessed their lives but also contributed to the divine plan of redemption and reconciliation. In addition to these stories, we should recall the messianic promise given to David, which also highlights the importance of the tribe of Judah. When we examine the genealogical records in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, we notice Jesus' lineage traced back to David and, consequently, to Judah. This genealogical trace confirms the fulfillment of messianic prophecy in Jesus, a descendant of the tribe of Judah, strengthening our understanding of divine promise throughout Israel's history. David, chosen by God as king, left a lasting legacy in Israel's history. 
His reign was characterized by military victories, the nation's development, and the conquest of Jerusalem as its capital. The promise made to David, recorded in the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, marks a crucial point in Israel's history. God promises David to establish his descendant as king, whose reign will be eternal. The passage states, I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning. This promise is laden with messianic significance, pointing to a future king who would bring stability, justice, and an eternal kingdom. The connection to Judah becomes evident when we consider subsequent prophecies, which specify that this promised descendant would come from David's lineage, belonging to the tribe of Judah, culminating in Jesus Christ. However, it is important to remember the unconditional covenant God made with David, when your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. After David's death, his son Solomon ascended the throne of Israel. Under Solomon's reign, Israel enjoyed a period of great prosperity in development, thanks to his wisdom and justice. However, as Solomon grew older, his reign faced challenges. After his death, there was a division in Israel, forming two rival kingdoms, the Northern Kingdom, represented by Israel, and the Southern Kingdom, represented by Judah. Throughout the generations, although there was a mixture of both good and bad kings in both kingdoms, Judah managed to maintain the dynastic lineage, culminating in the lineage that would lead to Christ. During the invasion and subsequent exile of the Assyrians, the apostate northern kingdom of Israel was completely destroyed, resulting in the disappearance of ten of the tribes from history. However, Judah's lineage remained resilient. Of Jacob's twelve sons, Judah emerged as a remnant, a small flame that kept alive the spark of divine leadership. This scenario, as predicted in the prophecies, confirmed that the scepter of leadership truly resided in the tribe of Judah. By choosing Judah, God not only fulfilled the prophecies but also established a solid foundation for Jesus' mission on earth. The lineage of Judah symbolizes the continuity of the promise of a Redeemer, and the fulfillment of these prophecies in Jesus Christ reveals the magnitude of divine love and wisdom. As we understand Judah's choice, we are led to contemplate the greatness of the divine plan and recognize God's sovereignty in the trajectory of redemption. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you've made it this far, please leave your like, subscribe to the channel, and click on one of the two videos that will appear on the screen to continue following us. Thank you, and may God bless you, and see you soon.